Hello everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And today we are going live to paint our Picasso self-portraits. So I can see that I'm actually going now on Facebook. Hopefully I'll be able to see comments too. If for some reason I cannot, um, then I will definitely catch up after the class. Sometimes Zoom limits my ability to do that, or at least I'm having a learning curve. You're welcome to help me with that if you want. <laughs> if you have some advice, please share. Because um, I am seeing it over here and I don't see um, comments yet. But I always get back with everybody after class just in case. All right, so let, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do today. So this is our beautiful painting. I do have a painting kit that goes with this. But it's also really easy to do at home if you have all of your own supplies. And uh, I guide you through this step by step. So there's a lot of freedom and flexibility with this painting because it is a Picasso and it is supposed to be you. So it will definitely be very unique for every single person that does this. I have taught this painting a lot with beginners and it is always really fascinating that even beginners who have never painted before always end up with a representation that actually looks a lot like themselves. And um, now, to be honest, I haven't had a whole lot of men do this. I do have a couple that I know that's going to be joining me for this that will be celebrating their anniversary. Congrats to y'all. Um, so that's a wonderful idea for an anniversary. Um, I do know that when women do this, they already have a lot of mastery on their own face shape because of applying makeup every day. So I think that's why they're able to really do the eye shape so well in the, sh in the shape of their lips because they're so accustomed to doing that that they actually really surprise themselves and pull it off with a lot of uh, skill, more, more than they realize. Um, so it's a very fun painting to do and even if you look a little strange, it's got a very, I think, a comic, a, a, you know, like appeal to it. Um, I think, anyway. I know that Picasso may have not <laughs> had that intention. But I think there's a nice comedic uh, impact with it. So it's elegant, but it can also be um, maybe a bit humorous too, just depending on what happens. So don't take yourself too seriously. If you end up looking a little bit goofy, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so it can always be a great conversation piece. All right, so in our kit, it does come with 11 by 14. And I am working with a larger scale today. Uh, 16 by 20 just so that it is easier to see in the monitor here so uh, that's you know going to be a little bit of a difference there so you're going to have some range in terms of how you work at home you can do it with 16 by 20 um, you can do it with 11 by 14 8 by 10 you could probably even do it on a 12 by 12 anyway there's just lots of um, flexibility with that so um, let's talk about some things to gather ahead of time now I do have as I mentioned a kit so if you get the kit from me, you'll get uh, these paints right here. They're awesome. And then I do have brushes that come with the kit. So I know I always definitely include, let's see, I'm going to talk about my little family here. So there's, it depends on which kit you get. Um, I have a variety of brushes, but definitely you'll get Mama and Little Buddy and Little Bit. And then sometimes I include a kit that also has... Big Daddy, so a bigger brush there that goes with that. So I'll have that. I also make sure that I've got some napkins or like a paper towel uh, or rag, something like that nearby. And then I will get a bucket of water nearby, I've got that. And then a palette of some sort, you can use plates or I'm going to be using these like metal trays that I get from, get these from uh, Dollar Tree and I love them so they just they're they're elegant but they also are really fun for holding paint so I have those nearby and let's see here I've got my brushes nearby and then um, also for for the shape making oh and a pencil got that that'll come in your kit too um, I'm also going to grab some things around the house like uh, this is just a real simple can good um, use this uh, for that shape there and so or, or not if you don't want to do that um, and then I've got a little washer or your kit comes with some tape so we can use this for like a little circles in here too 
and then a uh, ruler is awesome to have as well but if you don't have a ruler anywhere in the house and you have our kit then you can also use the edge of the box just to make uh, those straight edges to work with the design elements here that are happening so we're all ready to go it's gonna be exciting all right I'm gonna go ahead and place this here off to the side and then I'm gonna go ahead and move the model let's go ahead and put this put this over to the side we'll reference that as we go here all right so as I get started the very first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start with uh, the face so um, and there's not like an exact place to start um, but you do just want to make sure you do have an allowance for some of that head space right up above so you want to think about you know a little bit of hair a little bit of forehead and then I'm going to go ahead and use my pencil here and the basic first eye shape here will just be like making a parenthesis. I'm going to make a parenthesis like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. Let's do one big, one big eye, just like that. But that's kind of hard for y'all to see. Interesting. Did not consider that. It's very light. Let me actually hmm, if I pull that closer. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to grab, I want y'all to be able to see this. All right, so I've got a permanent marker. I'm going to do it with a pencil first, and then I'll follow up with a permanent marker just so you can make sure and see it in the uh, monitor. So I've got, all right, so just like that, that's just going to be, again, there's that parenthesis shape. And then I want to make, um, another eye just like this right next to it and it's that same parenthesis shape I'm happy with that so let's go ahead and just make that same shape just like that all right and then I'll do another one right underneath and you don't have to close it all the way and then on this one I don't want to do an edge and that's, you know, just a creative decision. You can do two eyes that are completely closed if you want. But again, this is an abstract, so you can definitely be a little bit different. You can do this differently than how I do it. So the next shape that I'm going to do is kind of a fun little, it's like the letter U. So I'm going to make the letter U. And then I'm going to do that again. So another one. So it's a nice design element that also makes for the shape of an eye. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So it's like the letter U and then another letter U. Alright, so now I've got two fun little eyes that I've got going on here. Alright, so now what I want to do is I've got the reference here that goes up to the forehead. So I'm going to go ahead and go up. And then I want to come, actually let's do an eyebrow next. So I've got this eyebrow that I'm going to go ahead and place in. And that's, again, very similar to that little parenthesis shape. Keep it really simple. Kind of stylized. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Let's do another eyebrow. I'm going to go ahead and do this with my permanent marker so you can see it. get another one of these. This is kind of, I've used this a lot. Hopefully this one will be better. Yeah. Alright, right, so now we have two cute little eyebrows. All right, so that helps me progress to the next stage. So now I'm gonna be thinking about that forehead. So from here to here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this up to the hairline and make another line for a hairline that comes down and around the eye. Then I'm going to have this kind of um, funky little nose here. So I just do mine like something that's very similar to what I've already seen in a Picasso painting before. 
So I just kind of take it down for a curve, and then I'm just going to go simple, just straight line in. Then I'm going to go ahead and do, this is that upper lip that comes in, okay, right, this little shape right in through here. So it's just an angle, just a straight angle right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and do lips. Now my lips are a little bit more full, so I go ahead and do my, my, my lips. Um, so you can dream if you want full lips, if you want fuller lips, or you can make them more thin to make it match like what you have. So that's up to you here. But I'm going to go ahead and do these full lips, and they're going to be positioned where they're just more frontal. So I'm going to go ahead and go up, and then up again, and then I'm going to go ahead and make that straight line. There's my bottom lip. See, and this is already becoming very different than even my model. So it's going to change a little bit. So I've got maybe even fuller lips this time than I've had in the past. There they are. All right. Then I'm going to have my chin here, so a little curve. And then this is going to come up. All right. So isn't this fun? It's just an abstract. Just relax. Take a deep breath. You can do this. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the hairline down to here. Now, if you have, I have options. I have curly hair naturally. Um, I straighten it a lot. For this painting, I typically do a straight version. But so it just depends on what you want to do. If you've got curly hair and you want to represent that in your painting, then of course you can do waves or curls. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few little fun shapes that I'll add into here. And let's just make some curves that come around. These will just be fun shapes that will come into the hair. So again, they're just abstracted. Uh, let me go ahead and do a neck in here. So I've got a neck that will come down. All right, you can see the face is already starting to take shape here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another kind of fun piece of hair that will come into here, just for a little bit of color that comes in. And then let's see, okay, here's where I've got, you know, something that could, you know, represent like a, a chest area, or you could, if you don't want that, you could just do it like a curve that comes down. But it's kind of a fun place to put a little circle here too. So I've got my little circle. I'm using my can good for that. Oh. Ta-da! <laughs> so cute. All right, and then uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and use my ruler, or again, you can use the paint box if you want that. So I'm going to go ahead and do... Let's just do a straight line that goes all the way down from here, okay? And then I want, I've got this fun little stripe pattern happening. So I'll continue to do my little stripes. And so let's do some stripes. Just keep this. I think I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to plan ahead a little bit. I'm going to make a line right here. And then I want this to be a little bit of a curve here. So I'm going to go ahead and take this line and just kind of curve it in. Almost like a little upside down triangle there. And then I'll keep making my little stripes that go all the way down. Make sure I'm not in the way, hopefully not. I'm going into a little bit of an issue. I'm going to turn this so I've got space because I'm. This is getting in the way of my ruler, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this.
So, I have beautiful stripes. Okay, so let's see. What else, what else? All right, so now I think I want to go ahead and just make sure I have more of the hair kind of worked into the design. But you can see how it's kind of fun right now. Like if I had short hair, for example, I might just want to, you know, cut it here and here. Or you could even taper it in closer to the face. But since I do have a little bit of some longer hair, I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way down. And I can even do a little curl if I want. I didn't do that one in the other painting, but I think it's kind of fun this time. And then let's do another one. Okay, maybe a little curl there. So see, there's some fun options that we can do. And then now that we have, this is pretty much the entire human form. Oh, I also want to do a little circle here. It's kind of fun. So you can use that little tape piece that I have with the kit to do it there. Or like I just also grabbed a washer or a quarter even works around the house. So I'm going to go ahead and place this here. Around this. All right, so that's a fun little cheek. It's cute. All right, now let's go back to my ruler, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a straight edge here. All right, and then let's see. I've got a kind of a different design happening here. I'm going to change it up. Just a smidge. Just go ahead and do, let's continue on with our straight line. All the way across. Okay, that's fun. All right, now let's go ahead and come back to this washer or a circle or a quarter. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some circles in here. A circle come out in front or you could have it come behind here. I think in this one I'll just leave it a little bit behind here. And then I'll do another one here. Let's do one more. So we've got some fun designs happening there. And then let's go ahead and take our ruler again. And um, I, I had some different abstract patterns that I used. It's optional. You can make it more simple if you want to. I'm going to make um, what looks like almost like a few little leaves here. So it looks like a parenthesis and another parenthesis. And let's do a few more of those. This kind of breaks it up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my straight edge and do one line to here. That I'll just do like a color block there. And then let's see. I've got kind of a, a fun little abstract design on the other side. Let's see here. Let's do our circle one more time. Right in through here. like a big parenthesis shape and then another one and then a straight line to that so it's just kind of a fun random geometric shape happening there and then here let's go ahead and I'm gonna do one more little square in here so I'll take my ruler and just do one more straight edge So we've got a really great start now. We can start to work into this. All right, so this is a great foundation. And 
if you're following along, you're not quite done with all of your prep work here and your um, drawing before you start to paint with me as we do like when this becomes not live and you're actually uh, trying to paint with me. You can always just pause it and then get caught up and then start to join me with the painting process. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start now with a beautiful turquoise color. So in your painting kit here, you will find, and I'm going to be using some of my used paints so I can get those used up, but I'm going to be using some Viridian. And I'm going to go ahead and place this on my plate here. All right, so there it is. I've got like a dime-sized dollop of that. Now some titanium white, using a little bit more of this, and a nice quarter size dollop of that. And then let's also grab some blue. Okay, some primary cyan blue. And we just want a little tiny amount of that, so I'll go back to that dime size amount. So this is what it looks like right now on your mixing plate or your palette. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with my, this is my mama brush. Okay, she's just a flat tack on brush. And... I'm going to go ahead and push into a lot of white here and then a little touch of that viridian. Start to work that into the mix. Let's get a nice angle to where you can see that in the monitor. There we go. All right, and very minty at this point. I'm going to add a little bit of some blue. That's going to start to pull that to more of like a turquoise color. Let me go ahead and work this back and forth. All right, so we have a beautiful turquoise here to start with. And I'm going to go ahead and place this. So this is my hairline here. So I'm going to go ahead and place my turquoise right into here. Now, to make sure I've got good coverage over the surface, I want to make sure that when I do a line edge, I'll hold the brush just like a pencil, and that makes a straight edge that I can work up against that line. But then when I'm getting good coverage over the surface area, then I want to make sure that I hold that brush with the flat side facing the canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to the side. This will give me a really nice, light, gentle hand. And hello to everybody out there again who's joining me. Thank you so much for being here. All right, let's take a look at that. Still some turquoise. A little bit blue. Now, I'm also going to leave black till the very last. I'm starting with some of the light, bright colors. And then we'll always save the black for the very end because it can be very overpowering and also kind of muddy up the other colors, so I do save that for the very end. So we have a beautiful turquoise quadrant in there, so that's really lovely. And then I'm going to start to look at my other areas of the canvas and see uh, where I might want to place this in here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do my circles with some of this as well. Now 
Now as I place this into the circle, I do a little push, and then I push out to a half circle like that, and that makes the uh, bristles of the brush, brush fan out into that shape. And then of course to come back in over the top and get better coverage, then I'll come back in and do a little bit of a crisscross right over the top here with the flat side of the brush. Start to check this with my glasses here, make sure I'm on track. We've got our beautiful little circles done. Let me go ahead and work over to this side as well. Again, more turquoise, so this is Viridian, Primary Cyan Blue, and then Titanium White. I can tell I need my glasses on that one. <laughs> Oops. So, losing my vision, but not enough to miss that. All right, so if you do have a little bit of a oopsie, now I'm going to come in with another color over the top of that, but you can use just a little bit of water, and I would recommend turning this to a flat. This is actually a great lesson in fixing a boo-boo. So see, I did this on purpose just so you could learn. Am I right? <laughs> so I've got a little bit of water on here, and I'm going to go ahead and push it right into that little bit of blue that went outside the line. So I have a little bit of water there. Then I'm going to take a napkin, and I'm just going to press right down on it, and then it'll lift right up takes it right off the canvas. So if you get to it quickly, it'll do that for you. And you, I didn't leave it in a vertical position because the water will run. We don't want the water to run. All right. So now I'm gonna go back to filling this in. We're getting those circles done. Feathering out the brush stroke. A little bit of a crisscross action over the top. Okay. All right, so I've got some nice color happening in here. And then, let's see. Next, we want to do, let's do some red. So we've got, all right, in our uh, painting kit, we have some cadmium red. And this is very warm. And so I like to cool it off a little bit with some uh, primary magenta. So I'm going to do about equal parts of both of these. So I'm going to do a nice big quarter size dollop of the primary magenta. Where did I put my lid? There it is. <laughs> okay. And then, all right, some of that cadmium red. So let's do some of that. Again, about the same size. All right, there we go. And I did go ahead and leave my brushes in, in the water now, let's give a little lesson on cleaning. 
Okay, so to clean your brush, you want to go ahead and push round and round and round. Some firm pressure. That will help release that paint from the brush and then you want to do some drags off the edge of the bucket and then watch until it goes clear. And then you want to make sure and dry it off here before we start again. And you do want to get to that quickly when you're done using the brush and don't ever just leave your brushes around. Uh, acrylic paint can set up and dry in about sometimes 5-10 minutes. So it will ruin your brushes pretty quickly. So always, always want to make sure and at least place them in the water if you don't have a chance to get to it right away. Alright, so we've got our primary magenta and our cadmium red. I'm going to do nice even mix of both of those together and this will give me a cool red. I love it, it's beautiful. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I can see. All right, let's go back. And again, I'm still using my mama brush here. All right, so I've got this color in this shape and I'm just working it on over to the side. Now, to get a nice straight line too, again, you can hold the brush just like this, just like a pencil, and then uh, that will make a nice straight line. That gives you a little bit more control. If you do have some transparency happening, again, you can always come back over with the side, flat side of the brush, and then just gently lay that on over, right over the top. And then follow this curve. And I am seeing a little bit of that transparency, so again, I will come back in a little bit of a second coat and make sure that that handle is out to the side and that flat side of the brush faces the canvas. And in the larger areas, I also like to do a little bit of just like a crisscross action to it. Gives it some nice texture. I'm going to wrap this paint just a little bit around the edge. Now, if you want to frame your canvas, then of course you don't have to worry too much about it, um, but you do want to make sure that you've got enough paint to actually wrap around the edge where you don't have any blank canvas that shows through. And of course, if you want to just, if you've got one of these that has a little bit of depth to it, uh, then you don't necessarily have to paint all of it, but you can just kind of wrap it all the way around the edge there. It's a nice finished look. And that's, of course, if you're not going to frame it, then you do want to make sure and finish that out. That's my puppy dog, Miss Ira. She's coming up 
check out what I'm doing. So sometimes with red, it does have a tendency to be a little bit on the transparent side. So sometimes it does require a second coat, um, but also it's definitely helpful to really watch how you hold the brush because if you are holding it like a pencil and you're coming towards that paint, you're going to be scraping it off the canvas. That gives you a heavier hand. Um, so again, watch your handle. If it's towards you, it's probably scraping it off. Out to the side, it's a little bit more gentle and it allows a lot more of that paint to rest on the surface. really pretty and I've got a little bit of red and here I'm going to do a different color on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and work in some red in this shape here. And I'm seeing some brush strokes happening that I don't want. It did a little bit of a dig to get around the corner and the curve. So I'm going to go ahead and feather it, the brush strokes out, turning that handle more over to the side. And then again, just a little bit of a crisscross. Kind of feels like you make little tiny X's over the top. pretty and let's do a little cheek here, it's fun. That's really pretty. Okay. Now I'm also realizing that I forgot to do some turquoise that I really wanted to do earlier. So I'm going to rinse out and go back to the turquoise. I need to clean this brush first. Oh, good. Dry it off. Alright, now let's go back to my turquoise, which again is my Viridian and my uh, primary cyan blue and my titanium white. And I wanted a little bit of blue up in here, this little section, right into here. So it's just a fun little accent happening in the hair. And of course, you're welcome to use a completely different color there. Some people might love pink or purple. And I am using the edge of my brush quite a bit, so I'm giving some firm pressure to get that to be, there, there it is, uh, thin again. So it gives me more control. Alright, that's pretty, so I have a little bit of blue there, and... I want it just a little bit more here. And then in the model, 
I had done some blue lips. It was kind of different. I didn't want to be... I didn't want to have too much realism, so I definitely wanted the blue. So I'm going to come in with a little bit brush. I call this little bit, smallest brush here, a little bit of water. I'm going to go right back into that turquoise mix. And I want a nice fine point to give me more control, so I'm going to take my little bit brush and do a quick little twirl into the paint. And that will twist it off into a nice fine point. And then I'm going to go ahead and work into, into the lip shapes here. So initially I'm using more of the pointed side to get into the shape. And then when I finish out, I'm going to turn this handle over to the side as well to help finish into that shape. Just helps smooth out the brush strokes and also gives a nice layer of paint to rest on the surface of the canvas. And we have the little line that's happening in the middle. For right now, just so I have a reference to it, I'm going to come with a little bit of the darker blue. I'll eventually come back with the black and define that, but for right now I'm going to go ahead and do the blue. Pretty. Okay, so, all right, next up I'm going to bring in some of the brights now. So we'll bring in some pop of contrast. So I want to use some cadmium yellow. Nice big dollop of that. About a quarter size amount. Fine here, let's grab some cadmium orange. And I will do a nice big dollop of that as well. Alright, I need my little bit brush for this again. It is the smallest brush. I have just a teeny amount of water. I'm going to push into both of these colors here. Actually, just, I don't know why I said that. No, that's not what I did. One, one color. <laughs> just the cadmium. Cadmium yellow. You know what? And I want to mix this with this primary yellow, too. Because I'm doing the eyes first. That's what I'm doing. I should have said, I was thinking it. I did not say it out loud yet. Let me say it out loud. I want to do a little bit of eyes here. All right, so a little bit. Now let's twist it off. So I've got my more of that primary yellow and then the cadmium yellow. And let's go ahead and get that first. You know, this is that U shape. I'm going to go ahead and work into this shape. really pretty. I heard a little doo doo, but I see nothing but hello. <laughs> hello out there. Alright, so I've got that going first now. Um, I'm going to 
do a quick little wipe here on my little towel. I'm going to go into the bright orange. Bright orange, here we go. And I'm going to fill in this with bright orange. It's just kind of weird and different, but this is part of that beautiful abstract quality to it. And you may have to do a second coat on these to get a really nice amount of coverage over the top. They can be a bit translucent to begin with. Oh, I love it. Very extraordinary. Okay, she's got really cool eyes. Okay, so I'm done with a little bit for a moment. We're going to use a larger brush now. I'm going to go back to my mama brush. Hey, mama. This is where I want to put the two colors together. I want my cadmium and my orange together on this. That's what I was wanting. All right, so this is hair in here, so I'm going to make this bright. All right, so flat side to fill in and then line side. Hold it more like a pencil when you're doing the line work that comes around here. And remember too, you can always change these colors. So, especially if you've got like I'm doing black hair for me, uh, but if you've got blonde hair, then of course you might want a different, more contrasting color right next to your blonde hair. So there's lots of fun options here. And on my website and then also in the kit, there is a color mixing guide as well for every, every color. Fill it in, flat side of the brush. All right, it's looking good, it's very pretty. Okay, um, let's see here. I also, I'm going to go ahead and add this bright, vibrant color down here too. I'm just really digging it. So again, this is my cadmium yellow and my orange. So I'm going to go ahead and push this into this shape. And for fun, you know, we have some of this, um, you know what, I'm going to grab some, I'm not going to do a little bit of a mix in here, so I'm going to grab some primary magenta, a little pop of that nearby, a little dollop of that. Might do a little touch of primary magenta as I go, I push that back and forth. Like little X's. And then I'll take this all the way up. At first, I'm just getting nice, good coverage, so I'm holding the brush a little bit more, just like a pencil to really get in there, get those shapes worked into, but I will come back in 
with a little bit more intention and really try to hold the handle more out to the side and feather those strokes out in those little cross strokes again. Light hand, see like this. Really nice coverage there. A little bit of just bright yellow kind of popped in there. It's actually working out quite nicely. Feather this back out again here. Oh, really pretty. All right, let's make sure, looking around at my model here to make sure I've got everything that I want done the way I want it done here. Uh, I think I do. So we're going to go ahead. I want to make sure I get all the color done first before I actually start to work in my black for the most part. I can still do a few details, but let's see. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of some gray. So, let's go back to our titanium white. And also for now, um, I would say too, what I would recommend for beginners is to let the white of your canvas be your white. If um, if they try, if you try to mix up a color, oftentimes it will become splotchy, hard to match, and so I've seen frustration with that with beginners in the classes. Um, so, and a lot of times in a Picasso painting, there's some white space. So I, again, I think it's easier just to let it be white or just to use a pure white paint too. And then again, if you do want to mix up some specific color, you're more than welcome to. Um, but you just want to make sure that, and I have again, all the colors on my website, um, but you want to make sure you mix up quite a bit of it so that you, and it's all the same consistency. So you've got it all mixed up and you can make sure you place it all into whatever area you want there. All right, now, um, but let's go back to gray here. All right, so I have a little bit of some Mars black. There. <laughs> Lots of different things happening here. I looked at the wrong camera. All right. So here's my mama brush again. I just want a teeny tiny amount of the black, so I'm just going to barely touch into it and then push it into the white. That gives me just a little bit of some gray. Nice light gray there. Alright, so my gray is, I've got a little bit of some gray in here. It's for fun, or you're welcome to do a really pretty bright color in there. There it is, really pretty. And then I've got a little bit of some gray in here. So I'm going to do some firm pressure, make sure this is nice and thin. 
and then I can do my line work into this shape. Pretty. Okay, and let's do some really pretty light green too. Rinse that out. Let's use some of this awesome bright yellow green. Here it is got some titanium white nearby too if you want to make it even lighter. I'm going to go back to, well, let's see, I want, let's do Little Buddy. So, let's see. I have a Little Buddies, but they're like really old. Forget, I always forget to get myself a new set of paintbrushes sometimes. I'm like, oh my gosh. How old are these brushes? Oh, here's one. I was like, I thought I get. Yeah, I did. I gave myself one, but I forgot it over there. All right, so here's a newer uh, little buddy brush here. It's just a flat uh, tacklon brush, and let's go ahead and just push right into that bright yellow green. Let's add a little touch of the white to it too. Now I'm going to work into this really pretty. This is that leaf shape. So again, the edge side to get around that curve. And then you can turn the brush over to the side to fill that in. It's lovely. All right, I'm going to add another little pop of this. I'm loving this uh, green color. So I'm going to do another little pop of it up here at the top. Initially, this was black in the model, but I'm loving the color. So let's add some more. There it is, that's lovely. All right, I'm gonna do another color right in through there. Let's come back in with little bit brush and let's do a little bit of this primary magenta and a little bit of the orange. Mix those two together. really pretty. Okay. So at this point I'm determining color and how much more I want to do before going into the black. 
I'm going to do a few little more circles here. I'm coming back in with a clean little bit brush here and that magenta. And I'm going to spin out a fun little circle here. So I'm going to do. It almost looks like a little, it's like a little Cheerio, a little donut. So I'm going to do a few of these in here. Still alive? Okay, I'm hearing weird little like battery, losing battery noises and I don't understand. But maybe that's my phone, I'm not sure. I think we're all good though. Okay, yes, we're so good. All right, so let's see. I think it's time to start to make a commitment to black. All right, so yeah, it's getting serious, okay. Uh, so I'm going to come back in with, I've got my Big Daddy brush here, so I'm going to go to Big Daddy and we'll be using some Mars Black, and of course this is where you can certainly be um, creative and do your own thing, it kind of depends on what you know you want to use for like hair color primarily. Alright, so here we go, Big Daddy and Mars Black paint. I push back into this back and forth. And using the edge side, I work into this shape. And then using the flat side will help me fill it in to the larger sections. Older brush. I've got some bristles that are kind of splintering off a little bit. So I'm going to come back in with a newer brush. I can have a little bit more control there, making sure my edge is nice and thin. So I'll work into as much area as I can with this bigger brush and then I will have to shift over to smaller brushes to get into the smaller areas. So nice long curves, again use the edge, and then filling in, turn to the flat side. And then I need to reload with more paint, so again this is more of the Mars Black. section. 
Again, this is filling in the hair here. I've got a lot of hair. <laughs> It's all going to be black over here on this side as well. When it comes to the really tiny corners, I will have to come back in with my smaller little bit brush, which is that round tacklon brush. I'll have to get into that little corner. I can't do it with this bigger brush, but I'm going to do as much as I can. Got real close on that one. Almost. And then sometimes you can add a little bit of water to this to help have more control with the black, but you definitely want to have your canvas on a flat surface so that you don't get any water runs, because that will look like a mascara run. We're getting closer. Kind of 
has a nice little um, 50s, 60s vibe this time with the hair flips. to switch to a smaller brush to get into these smaller areas. So I will be going to my mama. Where is she? Where she is. Here's mama. Just a flat tack on brush. Nice and clean. Might use a little bit of my little bit too. But So I've got my stripes to work in, so I definitely wanted my mama for this. So you can make sure and thin it out. So you've got nice thin line to have control of the straight edge. I need more Mars Black. So let's get that going again. So again, Mars Black. And the mama brush, I've got it to where it does just fit almost perfectly in there. If you're working on a smaller canvas, then of course you can also use your little buddy brush to get into a smaller area too. We have our cute little stripes done. And then I'm going to firm up some of these lines here. And I still have a little bit to work on here. So I'll make sure it's very thin because I want to do a line here from this side. I've got my eyebrows that I still need to do, and I'm going to put Mama in the water, and I'm going to shift to my little bit brush here. All right, so this is a little bit, just a little tack on brush, round brush. Go into the black, give it a little twist, and that will rotate the head of the brush into a nice fine point. And then I'll use this to work into these eyebrows here. 
right into that shape. I'm also helping stabilize my hand a little bit by resting the weight of my hand on my pinky. It helps keep my hand steady. And I keep the eyebrows, I don't try to be too realistic, you know, like I just do that real simple line shape. Tightening up little bits of black line work that comes around the face shape here. And then I'm going to define these lips here a little bit. Getting really close to being done. So basically just coming in and just doing a little bit of defining here with the line work. And this is also something that if you're a little bit shaky with the brush, you can always let all the paint set up and dry and come back in with a Sharpie to, to help define your black at the very end. So it's looking really good and it's almost at a place where we could just call it finished. Um, if you do want to do a, a bit more of the line work at the very end, I would recommend using your um, either your mama or your big daddy for that. Make sure that they're nice and clean and then check your edge to make sure that it is nice and thin. And then you can come back in, like I'm going to come back into this black here. And see it's super thin on the edge, that's really important. And you can do the line, you, know, you can just do that line here. But this is also something that you could do with a Sharpie and a ruler. So, and I do recommend that as well for beginners. That can be very helpful. All right. But I think we can be done. I'm going to do one more thing. The eyes, I feel like I, I want to reinforce those. We're done with the uh, Sharpie in the beginning. But I feel like they're not as... I want, I want it to pop a little bit more with the paint. So I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush. Actually, let's get a thinner one here. There we go. All right, so a little bit and some black paint. I'm going to make the tops of the eyes just pop just a little bit more. So I've got that little twist into the paint. So this will get it into a nice fine point. That is important. And then I'm going to go ahead and it's kind of like putting on eyeliner at this point. So I'm just a little bit of eyeliner. Something here.
Definitely using that technique where I hold my hand down on rest the weight of my hand on my pinky that kind of helps stabilize a little bit and then you can make that same little U shape right over the top here this is going to make that first abstract design that we did it's going to make it pop out to the front a little bit more this is also something you can just do with your uh, permanent marker too One helpful hint on that, super important, is that you do have to make sure that the paint is completely dry before you do that. All right, so there it is. This is our super cute little self-portrait, like a Picasso style self-portrait. So again, a lot of freedom and flexibility with this to make it look like you and change the design up however you want with your colors that match your home, um, your favorite colors, all that fun stuff. And again, don't be discouraged if it becomes a little bit more, little bit more comical. Sometimes that happens with mine. Um, it just kind of depends on what direction I want to go. So again, this has been a great exercise in um, doing a painting that is very much in line with what Picasso did. Um, and it is the Picasso self-portrait. So, um, Yay, it was fun. I've been wanting to do this for a long time online, and it was always one of my most favorite classes to teach to people because everyone always um, had a painting that turned out to be so different, so uniquely them. So yes, so I do have a painting kit on my website at tipsyartist.com, so you're welcome to get that. Um, but I'll also have a supply list so you can do this um, at home if you have all of your own supplies as well. But yeah, I think we're good. So you're welcome to keep working on it and playing with it if you want to. Um, but it's been a pleasure having you paint with us tonight or today, whatever time it is when you finally watch this. But y'all have a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see y'all soon. Much love.